Hi. Hello. So it's um, it's been a few days since I posted the last video. I've um, I ended up meeting up with an old friend, Miles, and Gemma came over from London to spend some time by the coast. So um, the plan was to do some fishing, but unfortunately, the weather wasn't in our favour. I'm feeling great at the end of the week. I'm going to be going. I'm going to be going uh, home tomorrow. Well, going home tonight, starting to make my way home tonight. And um, yeah, I'm just making the most of the sea breeze. So Gemma and I parked up here in this, um, by this estuary just to make some dinner and um, have a little look around, hopefully get some sea arrow grass. I really want to get some of that before I head back, but um, we shall see if we find any. And there's loads of sea beet and other things around here. Now, um, yeah, so without further ado, I'm just going to let the videos play from the past few days. This is day 22. We are just casually sitting here on the pier of Herm Bay, I think it was. I forget the name. So I just bought this new rod because my other one, my original beach rod, got stolen. It was a lot longer than this, I'm sure it was, but... I've got this nice little thing plus this tripod stand and um, I'm just fishing out here to see what I can find. My cold has mostly subsided now just as I expected. I do have a slight tickle still but my senses are back and I feel good. So um, hopefully we'll catch something. I've got some herring for bait and um, I've got one of my weighted rigs. It's good to finally be out and fishing because I haven't done this for a long time and I haven't done it properly. I've only done a little bit of mackerel, um, of mackerel fishing at, uh, at some points and I've only caught a few. I haven't really tried to put too much effort into fishing properly. So with this wild food diet, this is a chance to do this. Now I only have a few days to do some fishing now and then I have to go home for a month and hopefully after that I'll come back to the coast and it will be mackerel season and then I'll do some hopefully I'll get a good bounty of mackerel so I've got my I've got my snack uh, my my tea my chaga and fennel so I'm going to keep having that for today and tomorrow just as I'm recovering and uh, yeah this is my this is my elixir and my hydration while I'm sitting out here and then I've also got a bit of pemmican and one of my pendulous sedge cookies. The pemmican has done me so well on this journey. It's kept me filled when I need it. And I've still got a lot left. So even if I don't catch a fish today, I still have some pretty good rations to get me through. I unfortunately didn't catch any fish. It started raining and like outside it's raining now. Um, so I have some sea kale that I harvested a couple of days ago and I'm going to fry that up in this pan. I've boiled it to hopefully get rid of some of the bitterness for a couple of minutes and then I'm going to fry it up in this pan with some salt, sea salt and some venison tallow. So that should hopefully be a nice filling supper for today. So um, yeah, just after that and I'm just going to relax now. It's raining, I'm in the campsite, I had my shower and and sorted myself out and yeah it's not, not, not all I can do when it's raining blistering rain like this so I'm just going to let that pass and hopefully tomorrow we will have some better weather so also at this campsite they have this cool little shop with loads of random bits and bobs which I think a guy picked up from a car boot or somewhere and then he just sells them in there and I picked up this this bait caster reel for five pounds and it's got a good amount of line on it in really good condition unfortunately after doing some research I can't just stick it on the rod that I have right now which means if I'm going to use it I'm going to need to have a look at a at a bait cast a rod made specifically for bait castings I also didn't plan for this um, rod and thingy so this is um I've just got it casually sitting up above the bed. This is the thing for holding the rod and it is it's too long for the van. It's running all the way out there so 
I'm gonna have to figure out a way to fit this in. My rod is fixed up here just above the top. Now thankfully it all goes in here without having to shuffle things around and and uh, yeah so it's all good. It's all good. I'm gonna start cooking my dinner and relax for the evening. So this is during our wild biome chat where we meet up once a week or twice a week and we just uh, we have a chat about how we're doing on the diet and how what what else uh, what our experiences are and little advice and things to help each other and I've just finished I've just finished my sea kale I've been frying it I've been frying it up and um, it's ready to it's ready to enjoy so let's dig in and see what it tastes like. <laughs> Mmm. Mmm. Tastes a little bit like slightly bitter. Not too bitter this time. I think after boiling it really helped. Boiling it for two minutes really helped to reduce that um reduce the bitterness that was in the kale. So now mm, You can really get that. You can really get the cabbage flavour through because it is in that family. It's um, wow. It's actually really, really, really good. I'm enjoying this. I'm really enjoying this. It's a nice sunny day today, and um, after a night time of constant, constant rain, we've got these clear skies for a moment. It's a little bit windy, but um, I've parked up somewhere that hopefully will offer me the opportunity to do some fishing or crabbing. I just stopped at this part of the coast. I'm not quite at the place where I was thinking of trying fishing. I've got my rod with me and um, I've also got my crab net. But what I was really curious about was this stretch of rocks just here. Now I'm not sure if those are live oysters but it looks like there are oysters here. Now I've never harvested oysters fresh before so I don't know if they're actually really fixed to the rocks and you have to batter them off or not but perhaps that is the case and they do look like they're alive. Yep that, that one was alive so I just need to figure out how I'm going to wedge them off but if anything if I don't catch anything we have oysters so I might try and gather some of those we've also got a load of um, these winkles I don't know why they're called winkles that's how I remember them but we could potentially harvest a bunch of these and take those home as well now just further up I think they're a lot further up but I did see a load of mussels along here too so these rocks are quite abundant with a lot of stuff and not only that look at all the seaweed we have um, it looks like tooth it looks like tooth frag and then we also have oh, what do you call this again sargassum I think it was wireweed perhaps I forget the exact name of this it's in my seaweed book in the car but these little fronds here are really nice to add to a salad I've done that before and we also have little bits little bits of sea lettuce showing up so that's really good and thankfully oh no I am starting to get a bit of it but there is a shower just passing over here and it almost has completely bypassed this set of rocks that I'm on so that's quite lucky so it looks like there's clear skies ahead so we should be good for getting some lines out. I didn't have much luck doing the fishing. Um, I did I did catch a bit of seaweed on a rock 
this. Unfortunately, I didn't catch anything, so I'm not going to go away empty-handed. The tide's been rushing in and in around my feet while I was fishing, and if I hang up, it's coming in quite fast actually. So, whilst I have the chance, all these mussels around here, I'm just looking for some nice, decent-sized mussels, and I'm going to take some of these in a bag and boil them up. nearly there. I'm just going to keep picking a few more. And once I fill this bag up, there's loads of them. There's hundreds, hundreds, hundreds all the way up here. So I'm going to gather and I'm going to head back to the van because it's getting pretty blistery windy right now. Um, I don't even know if the wind thing on the microphone is actually even helping. Is that good? It is. Oh wow, Miles bringing in the goodies. <laughs> So. so we're just going to ignore okay. the fruit here. That's not part of the <laughs> wild food diet. But um, what do we have here, Gemma? Right, so I made this is my favourite thing I've made. So I've made these for around twenty years. So it's um it's not maple syrup. It, it is um, elderberry syrup. But I didn't put much honey in this one because we're on the wild food diet. So it's just a touch of honey in there. Um, so it's some elderberries I foraged last year and then uh, put in the freezer since then. Um, and it's infused with a little bit of hogsy, a little bit of um, uh, wood rough, and a little bit of mugwort. Um, and that's it. So it should be really good for you, really nutritious and warming and lovely. Mm, sounds amazing. <laughs> Look, I tell you, in the world of archaeology, anything made of pottery has got a value. Yeah. Uh, because even though it might be common or garden to everybody else, yeah. um, in archaeology, uh, they, you find a tiny bit of tiny bit of tile or pottery, and look, then the archaeologists they've got to um, they got to date it. It's worth it, trust me. <laughs> right. So there you go, wood ants. Okay, do I, what, do I just take one? Yeah, just take one. I don't know if I could... It's I all could. psychological. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. It's all psychological. <laughs> what okay. we're doing, yeah, is we're taking, we're taking ants out of this category in your head that, that is like this thing that crawls yeah. out Yeah, don't say Into that. Into this category. <laughs> no, don't, Miles, don't it's make it worse. <laughs> okay. And that's what's happening right now. You're about to move categories. Is it? It's going to jump? Category. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm just not going to look gonna at it. It's going to jump out okay. of one into the other. Don't, don't say jump. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's going to crawl out of one. Oh, God. <laughs> Okay, I'm not gonna. Oh, uh, okay. I'm not gonna. Okay. No, just do it. Okay. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. We believe in it. There you go. Mm. <laughs> every 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 everyone has that reaction. There you go. Everyone it's nice has. From one side. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. That's sorrel. Yeah, yeah but sweet. yeah, yeah. It's, it's all the formic acid. Right, mm. A little bit sweet. So have we just okay, converted. Have we just converted you to wood ants? Mm. It tastes good. Let's <laughs> just say that. It's nice. <laughs> So these are wild chervil roots. Oh, I've not tried wild Well, chervil. I say wild chervil. Most people know it as uh, cow pastry, but... Ooh. Yeah, but I haven't actually had the I've never thought of digging up the roots before. We don't have to dig them up. You just, just note where it's kind of nice, loose soil, and you just mm. yank them up, then. I just grab one at a time. Just grab a little bit, just, yeah. It's, it's very aromatic. Mmm. That's got a really nice flavour. Right, so what with it on Miles? Fool's watercress. Uh, oh, fool's watercress, wow. And you know, they're just the tiny little roots. I haven't, really used, them, I haven't really used fool's watercress much. That's fantastic. Oh, so many lovely greens. I think that was, like, at the very beginning of this, because normally I have so many greens, and I kind of, yeah, I just didn't eat enough greens, and then I just started really craving it. As well. Lovely.
Acorn Crew with Ramsons. These are Wild Shovel and water, uh, Fools Watercress Roots. There's some Dogfish, Sea Bass. And this is a combination of um, water, uh, Fools Watercress, Hogweed, Dock Stems. Uh, and then there's a salad with Rocket, Fennel, Forsythia Flowers, uh, Bird Shovel, Chickweed, Ground Ivy. I think that might be it. Yeah. Gosh. Oh. And salt. Wow, that's really amazing. Yeah. It looks good. Let's eat. So this is my classic chestnut cake, which I've been making for a few years. And I've always made it fully wild actually, so it's been really handy for this. So it's chestnut cake, but actually this one is different because this has got um reed mace. Yeah. Reed mace flour in it. Uh it's got honey and some eggs, um, and a little bit of rose petal powder. Um, oh, I can't remember. Uh, there's, then when it came out still warm, I put some grape hyacinth syrup with honey, and I'm just putting some Darwin's barberry flowers on the top as well. So it's the cleavers morning. We have cleavers coffee seeds just going and roasting. We have some leaves here that Gemma's going to blitz into some juice. So you're just de-bearding. Be just debearding the muscles. So you've got to pull that bit out. Alright, Richard, do you want me to tell you all about it? Yeah, what have we got? Okay, so we've got these muscles that you foraged from somewhere. Yeah. And uh, we've bearded that we just bearded them, we put them in the bucket with salt water to purge a bit overnight. We've grilled them. Now I'm just getting them out and keep them warm in the oven. And then I'm gonna strain them off, strain this broth off, right? And then we've got last night's uh, veggies. So that's yeah. uh, a mix of chopped fennel, chopped hogweed, fennel stems, hogweed stalks, dock stems, and uh, fool's watercress stems. So I'm going to warm some of that through. We'll pick, and, and we'll pick down the mussels and have that. But before that, we're just having this broth made from your sea bass head uh, and bones. And with that, we're having, where are we? Just so I slow baked a couple of dogfish, um, and you just picked that down. And we're just, I'm yeah. just reheating the meat, so we're going to have dogfish meat with the uh, with the fish broth, which I've just flavoured with some fennel. Cool. So sounds delicious. Over here in the thermomix, we've got um, cleaver's seeds, which have been uh, toasted in the pan and then blitzed. And that's going to be our uh, wild coffee. Because Cleavers is in the coffee family, they seem to have a bit of caffeine in them. So that is our, uh, our wild feast. So we've got to start we've got green juice. So this is a juice of cleavers, chickweed, mint and fennel. And then to sweeten we've got a grape hyacinth and honey syrup. And then we've got uh, cleavers coffee, roasted cleavers seeds, roasted in ground. Um, and this is a broth made from sea bass head and bones with uh, baked dogfish and fennel. So that's uh, like a savoury porridge. It's got stalks and stems of fennel, dock and uh, fool's watercress. Um, then the broth from the mussels, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, so that was just poured off after they baked in the oven. And then some ramsons there. And then I've added chestnut flour to thicken it up. So we've basically got, yeah, chestnut porridge with stalk stems, wow. ramsons and mussel broth. So well, we're really feasting today and we've got our oven baked mussels here too, so... Wow. <laughs> right, so we just parked up where well, we came to park up. Um, that's Gemma's van there. Um, yeah, we just came to park up by this by the estuary and um, cook up some food before we think about going our separate ways and heading home. Look at all this sea beet. So I just found 
found a load of sea beet here, so that could possibly be used for um, some of our meal. Wow, look at the size of it. Amazing freshwater spring here by the estuary. So I'm gonna make a note of this because if I'm ever down this way again, I have a source of fresh water. Wow, look how good these look. Mm. Now, so this is the finished meal. So, do you want to talk us through what we've got yes, here? Yes, so we've got a bit of land and a bit of sea. So, we've got some wild venison burgers with chanterelles, chestnuts, wild garlic, and seasoned with some Alexander seeds, conifer salt sumac and wild marjoram on a bed of sea beet and then we've got some uh, stir-fried uh, sea kale with some mussels wow 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 let's dig in <laughs> Perfect. I was just saying it'd be good to have some of that um, raw ketchup. Oh yeah, I've got some mm. in the fridge, but mm. I just haven't thought about using it. finished the last of it last week. The problem is it's got sugar in it, so I haven't... It, okay. More sugar than my blackberry vinegar, so I haven't decided to eat it yet. I'm just thinking, I don't think I've got anything to make a sauce here. Mm. Um. I really do love the whole community aspect of everything um, on this wild food diet. We ate really well, we ate really well the past few days and um, such diversity of things is just, it's just remarkable what each person brings to the table and it's a nice contrast from being in the city. I just needed, I needed this, I needed the fresh air, I needed the sea air and I've got to go back for a month, I won't be able to come back out to the ocean for about there for at least three weeks so making the most of the the salty air and yeah it's been it's been good <laughs>